Basically, sort of the enigma aspect of you know Bonassi being enigmatic, um, the mask, you know, uh, not being able to unmask to find an identity. Also, uh, Fiona's character is obviously you can see she's very sort of almost a mute in it, and uh, she you know they get nowhere. It rains. They're in the car taking refuge because of the wet, and she's kind of almost trying to escape. So. A little bit of a part of her own sort of escape. You know, like sometimes you're doing something and you think, oh, you know, I could be doing whatever. I could be dancing, I could be climbing a hill, I could be potholing, I could be, and I'm stuck here with. Watched it. I'm putting the, the it's you know you saw the raindrop come across and just oh, you know it's raining again. Bend down and very cleverly Elliot morphs the two scenes together. And if you look, I bend down and put it together and then bend up in the costume. <laughs> you know, <Yeah. laughs> you know, in my mind um, I've done stuff to sleep, but like all of us, you know, when we're doing something that's um, in one day, and it's getting more and more bizarre by the day. I mean, I tried to show that in my face, like, I'll look at him and say, oh, gosh, you know, he's coming in the, he's come in the room wearing that. Some right. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> um, and then she's still sort of up in that little world. So it's kind of the both, the two sides of those two ideas matched, matched together. And we, we were going to have that scene anyway, but that bit where where her character bends down was real. That was actually, we did get really wet. She bent down to shield all the stuff that we had on the ground. So that was, we were, so that scene had to slightly be changed, but we were, the church scene was planned anyway. Yes. Any more, any other questions? <coughs> did it rain a lot? <laughs> the first, the first, we are, you know, the first two weeks, yes, it, a lot. We started shooting in June, and it, like most of June was just rained up. Like the first, this, the second half of June we started and it, and it rained a lot, um, but it was mainly overcast, which was actually pretty good for shooting when it was overcast, it, you know, because it looked very moody, like especially on the this fishing scene with the guy Flint on the, that was Brock Hole, wasn't it? When we shot that. So it rained for the first two weeks, but then the next year, you know, it basically just a lot of overcast weather. The overcast weather was, I think, was quite. Easy, well, not easy to film with, but it looked better. But when it was very sunny, you've got the glare off the water. So Elliot's trying to film something, and I'm standing dangerously behind him with a big cloth leaning over, yeah, yeah, saying, to, to How long is yeah, this yeah. going She's to doing take? A lot of <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he said, It's all right, it's all right. I said, No, you might be all right. And I'm leaning out, trying to keep the glare off. And you've also got people doing this, you know, because you've got the glare in their mm -hmm. face. So actually, the duller weather worked out quite well, but um, we did have some wet days, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone? Yeah. I've got one, which is, um, I noticed Gentleman one of your tourists, oh sorry, Pike. one of your tourists was reading uh, Pike with a picture of Joan Collins on the back, is that what inspired? Yeah, that's right. That, that's that, what inspired that, your film. You heard about that guy Cliff Twemler, that his name was actually Twemler, I know it's <laughs> that sort of hit, yeah. Um, he wrote this he was a guy, this blow, this is true, and it was a bit of a thing that inspired me to do the film. Yeah. There's this guy called Cliff Twemler who started out, I think, as a nightclub bouncer. He was also a musician, but he was a big guy and he lifted a lot of weights and he basically started out as a nightclub bouncer and then he got into doing music, you know, like writing music that was used in certain films back in the 70s and then he started writing his own stories. And he somehow managed to get Joan Collins to come to, to Windermere and he was going to do this film about this giant pike in Lake Windermere. Um, and they couldn't raise the funds, but they actually, I think it was filmed by, I think it was, it might have been ITV Border, this is back in like 1983. Um, but they couldn't raise the funds, so she came to do this press thing, you know, and, and that's those pictures yeah. of her, yeah. I believe that they made two pike and they would never work. And they, yeah, they, didn't work. they were like hydro, and they, 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 yeah. Yeah, hydro pneumatic. Yeah, and, and, and they didn't neither work. of them ever worked. So. Yeah. Uh, 
just interested in the scene with Tim Farron. Did you did you brief him about that and so he then played along, or were you just kind of <laughs> no, not really. Things? No, it was it was uh, the thing is he's. I hope it didn't look like it was lampooning him, but he's kind of distanced himself from the film. He's given us his blessing, but he doesn't really want anything to do with it. And I told him that it wasn't. There's, that was around the time where he was being ridiculed a lot because he just stood down as. It was not long after he stood down as the national leader. But that was because there was a lot of not background noise when we did the, when we filmed him. There was a lot of background noise and. I had to work out a way of making that scene work. So I thought, well, if I could make it look like it was a hidden, he was filmed, you know, from close circuit TV because there's a lot of cameras around there. Hence why, you know, it, it, it sort of worked doing it that way. But but he did, we just told him that we're doing a documentary about Bonesi and could he look at, could he see the sort of the comparison, you know, because of Scotland, they claim sort of, I mean, figs <coughs> vary, but they claim like between 30 to, 40 million per annum is generated by international visitors going to the lake, you know, to the loch, sorry, to, to sort of get a glimpse of Bonesi. Could we sort of mirror that with, with Bonesi? So it was the only way to get him to do it, like the economic aspect of it. <laughs> but that's what he thought it was going to be. He just thought it was going to be some <coughs> flog, you know, about, you know, part of that. And it was, in a way, because it definitely is to try to support the local. Partly we tried to kill two birds with one stone, supporting, the, you know, the sort of... You know, economic aspect and also just something where it's a locally shot film with lo all local actors and everybody in it, sort of the musicians in it as well, they're all local. Yeah. They played along with it though, didn't yeah, they? He was, yeah, he was, I mean, he, he, yeah. yeah. I mean, afterwards he sort of, uh, he looked a bit like, he wasn't quite sure what he'd just been <laughs> doing. <laughs> so he just went on to the next job, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> But then what had just been through was probably far worse. So, you know. yeah, good did you invite him along to the tonight? Yeah, I did. Sorry, that you, that's it, yeah. Um, I did, I sent it. I mean, he declined. We, we, yeah, he, he, we had like a private screening. Yes. <laughs> well, he, he said that he'd be up for seeing it initially when we filmed it, you know, but then I think since he saw, um, since he saw what we did with it, I think he, and maybe he thought people were ridiculing, really but it definitely wasn't, you know. If anything, it, it makes the character Jeremy Clackhandle just look like the fool. I, I thought that my character would sort of take the pressure off him because you'd think, well, he, the guy is so idiotic, you know. So I thought that, but I think he didn't take it that way, so. Yeah. Can, can I just say, I mean, could we just say who we are? I, I was going to say, if we say our names and who we are. So. Yeah. My name's Karen Treadwell. Uh, you mean who, anything else? And you play? Oh, I play Fiona, and I did um, all sorts of other things also. <laughs> um, helped with doing some of the filming, um, making strange noises in the background, blowing uh, bubbles in the water, putting the camera in the water. Um, Diffusing the light. Um, yes. Uh, driving, collecting people from places, and laughing at Elliot falling in the water, um, <laughs> and just generally taking photos only with my, no pants. Taking on lots of photographs, which you can <clears throat> have a look at out here. Um, I also was in the choir that sang on the um, soundtrack. Soundtrack's great, by the way. And uh, what else did I do? Kind of just little bits of everything. I also. Wore a red dress and danced around, <laughs> in, which I'm very embarrassed about. Um, in uh, the parish church, thanks to uh, the Reverend um, Ashley Henderson up there for letting us use the church a, a few weeks ago. So I sort Thank of did a, a bit of everything. Yeah. Um, I'm Zoe Baker, and I played Daisley um, as part of the Canadian film crew that went missing. And um, lots of shenanigans on the boat. Um, <laughs> none of the alcohol or drugs were real. I just hasten to add. <laughs> so, uh, just in case there was any any confusion there, just to clarify. Um, drugs were real, but. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you did a great Canadian accent as well. Sorry? You did a great Canadian accent. The, the, you, well, the Canadian accent that was dubbed, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, even though my half brother's Canadian, I, I didn't want to do him a misjustice by, um, <laughs> by it be appearing American, which would have been the worst thing ever. Well, it was an American woman that touched you, actually. Oh, All the, the four people that did the voice of I wish they could have come, but they were all American. But I was like, well, it's North American, right? Canada, <laughs> the US, Canada. <laughs> <laughs> and they're from British Columbia, and all, I got at least three people from sort of the West Coast. So British Columbia, they do have a similarish tone on the West side. Yeah. Sick, sort of. Yeah. I hope there's no one. Is there anyone from Canada? <laughs> And I'm Anne Lees, and I played Comfort. Comfort, which is quite an interesting name. Um, the ringleader. <laughs> the ringleader. <laughs> and uh, yes, it was. It was really fun because we uh, we also filmed. I think the whole idea of people being on a boat enjoying themselves on Lake Windermere, as we were just mentioning, it tends to rain quite a lot. So <laughs> this whole idea of being, uh, you know, on a yacht, just green screened. Yes, <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't that Sunday. glorious and sunny when we filmed. Yeah. <laughs> it was so real, cold. If anyone's interested, the, the real photos are there, the green screen. But there was one outdoor. Sh there, there was there was one outdoor, which was done. You know, the well, my hair disappeared because it was the same colour as the green screen. That yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 So we have a lot of tattoos, and of course, there's a lot of green ink. So yeah, what you key out was the green screen. <laughs> And yeah, I'm Elliot Leon, I play Jeremy Clark Handel. Clark Handel. Clark Handel. Clark Handel. What a name. <laughs> what about your pseudonym? Sorry? Presumably the Leon Oh no Latiel. Yeah. That's Kate you as well. Bell. Yeah. Why the pseudonym? What no Latiel? Yeah. Just because I didn't want to keep putting my name for stuff so far. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Elliot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My pseudonym was Katie. Bell. Oh, did you mean the? Um, oh, no, no, just the, 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 yeah. the, the why you, you had the anagram of your name on there and presented two ways. Yeah, yeah. yeah. no, Latiel. <coughs> it was that, and it, it was just a, a sort of. I was actually thinking of using that because I've got a publishing deal with some music that I've written, so I just use that name anyway. So, yeah. Well, rather than put Elliot again. So. <laughs> yeah. But Karen, I mean, Karen did a, she did five or six different roles, really, didn't you? Yeah, really mm. even more. And th there's a lot of stuff where, whenever you see me on the jetty, obviously Karen was filming that, and uh, and when the two of us are in, I would set it up and we walk into shot. Uh, but a lot of it was down to the fact we couldn't get funding, so. Multi task. Multi task. Yeah. yeah. Um, like, um, sorry. Yeah, no, no. Uh, I'm Kevin Beecroft. I play the local one. Um, basically, if you listen to my accent, obviously I'm not local. But uh, <laughs> it's um, yeah, it, it was good fun. Um, I enjoyed making a a full uh, clock on loop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's. Um, I believe it or not, that was filmed um, in Kendall yeah, um, by the railway station, if anyone's interested. Mm -hmm. uh, Most people said they liked the wall. Yeah, yeah. So it's, the, it's the wall on the back side of the railway station leading up to, uh, I think Winfell, it's, it, it used to be Winfell, it be but it's, uh, it's been taken over and it's a, a, an ice firm now, a refrigerator firm. Yeah, it's a little cool. cool. Yeah, it's cool. yeah. So, but that's where that was filmed. So, yeah, it's a uh, poetic license, I think it's called. Because, yeah. of course, Kendall, you know, as everyone knows, it doesn't have that slate look that you get once you get into... Is it really here that you start yeah, getting the just, slate? Yeah. Every, yeah, the walls almost. have slate or whatever, yeah. Kendall is sort of limestone, is it? A lot of well, it's the old grey, too. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. 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 so that's the only place behind the, the railway station where there's actual slate, so we thought, OK. Is this the first film you've made? No, no. They, well, this is of this scale, yeah. <coughs> yeah. But I did film. Should you want me to go into it or yeah. Like yeah. my whole yeah, yeah. connection, with my relationship with? It. Well, I started doing stuff because my dad's here, um, and he. I have a question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Save it. 
Who played the arm holding the sword? <laughs> she, you know, she used to be a, a, a champion swimmer in France. And how, long yeah. have, how long did you have to hold Synchronized your breath for? Synchronised swimming. She's not a breath a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. How long did you have to hold your breath for? Uh, ages, ages. We couldn't get the shots right. So. We had a glass tube in set so that you could breathe oh, through really? it. So you can't see it. <laughs> yeah, sure. It was really, and, and you know, we had to do it in windmill. The water was cold. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And obviously, Paul uh, Messi were in there as well. Well, yeah. <laughs> Hence the this song. is why I was like shaking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, sorry. You were, Just, were you, yeah, about your history. Obviously. Yeah, well, I, my dad had an old Super 8 millimeter, no, a single 8 millimeter camera. Like, I don't like that. It was an old. My dad had like when I was very young, you know, 10, 11. I met. I remember messing around with my dad's old sort of eight millimeter camera and then um, I when I left school I left school at 16 I, I just went straight into a school leavers um, media studies course and it was obviously video by then and, and I did like a diploma in media studies like audio visual so I learned how to edit and sh you know just sort of shooting and editing and and then because I was also a musician I was more interested in trying to be in a band and you know play in a band and you know wasted like 15 years doing that. <laughs> like loads of other millions that go to London thinking the streets are paid with gold and you know. but I always would shoot sort of little promo videos for the bands I was in um, and every so often I would do little short films and then I did a short film I don't know about eight about nine or ten years ago 20 minute film um, sort of gothic horror type film and then I just thought let's try you know I'd, I'd wanted to do something about Bonesi from when I went to um, Lakeside uh, the the aquarium near Newby Bridge I think a friend of mine um, she just asked us she, she got married and she went to the to Seychelles to get married and asked my wife and I if we would cat sit for a weekend so yeah, she so had two cats, and would we go and stay for the weekend, a long weekend, and look after these cats? And they lived in Hatherthwaite, so we went down to the lakes aquarium. And when I went there, there was like loads of like Japanese tourists, Canadians, and they are these huge like zoom lenses, and they're all those one guy <coughs> pointing out into the lake, saying something, and he was, and they definitely were saying something about the Bowness monster. <laughs> I think they like you. You go to Loch Ness and you get people and they try to get a glimpse. And I just thought it would be a great idea. You know, do one, there's been loads of films made about the Loch Ness Monster, even Hollywood films. Why not one where you could ask, you know, do a documentary style and mix it with some kind of counter narrative? So that was really the beginning. The Canada connection was because uh, they have a. a well, there was a, Yeah. With a monster in it as well, don't they? Olga Pogo, <coughs> yeah, which is. Um, Amelia's, Amelia's character says yeah. about the polo in the film. In, yeah. um, but there was also a Cana the actual Canadian film crew, there was a Canadian film crew called CMJ Productions that actually came to Lake Windermere about four or five years ago and they did a documentary about Bonesi. So I thought, well, if I advance one letter in the alphabet to DNK from CMJ, <laughs> and then make them from the other side of Canada, the West, <laughs> and have them the... Yeah, no, sorry, because until people ask, I don't want to, you know, waffle on too much. <laughs> no, I'm sure people... I tend to get sidetracked and go off. <laughs> <laughs> was, was it all scripted? Yeah, I mean, the only things that weren't scripted were the people... <coughs> you saw the bone scenes with the, the tourists, the Vox Pops that we were doing, the Vox Populi. They were all just people that we asked would they do an interview. That was the only bit of words. Did they words. think it was genuine? Yeah, I mean, I just said it's a documentary about Bonesi, and, and some people, yeah, so some agreed to do it, you know. But all of those were, they weren't primed at all. They were just asking, answering the questions I asked them. When you say scripted, in the sense of a, a true script, no, it wasn't. It were suggested yeah, what to say and which way around to say, but like, well, well, there was an outline that I gave you. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You were yeah. an outline. Yeah. It weren't a perfect yeah. script. Uh, you, know, you didn't read yeah, a script no. and, and, and learn it. Right. It were 
well, this is what I want you to play, Kev, this is what I want you to do, and this is what I want you to say roughly, but in your own words. So it were, in a sense, there were a script, but in another sense, there weren't a proper script. Yeah. I think that's... Uh... Mm. My character, although there's no words, I had lines that I had to say fancy speaking to us like that, mm. those idiots, or whatever. Yeah, sure. So I had to <coughs> make my face mm. say the That's line. That's what you were thinking about. Mm. Difficult, or, or yeah. like when Elliot walks in, he goes, ta -da! <laughs> I'm supposed to be, oh my God. You know, but not too much, just yeah. enough to get, you know, mm. the expression. And of maybe sort of what thing. the viewer might be thinking at yes, that point. So well. yeah. You might be a sort of, you like, know, lent aperture or, or whatever you know, for the viewers. You know, whatever. So, there were kind of directions on what you've got to do, which is, you know, you've got to have Yeah, I think you were more directions than scripted in that sense. So that you've got some, you could bring something of your own personality into it, you know, or not, as the case may be. Because I'm not like Fiona, honestly. It says at the end, Elliot, that some of the stories were true. Can you tell us which ones? Oh, you read that bit, yeah. Which the the, the bit that was true, um, <laughs> the guy Thomas Nobler, the guy that played right, yeah. Marcus O'Reilly. I wonder if it was him. Yeah. yeah. Well, those two guys. You remember the two guys, uh, the second half of the film that were giving the one that said he went swimming at five in one. That's that guy has been ridiculed a lot, but he's told me, and I believe him. He what he said is not lot embellished at all. Um, he used to run the Langdale Chase Hotel, <laughs> but he, as you, if you listen, he doesn't say it's some huge dinosaur, but he felt something at five o'clock in the morning when the lake was flat calm, you know, there was no cruisers on the, on the lake that would send, because bow waves can be sent two miles from the one side of the lake to the other, you know, but there was nothing at 5 a.m. in, you know, early July. But what he said is what he experienced, and he said it's true, what those guys said about the thing that looked like a slab of meat that hit the side of the boat, that's also true which would suggest that it was scaleless, you know, and of course there's a one guy that reckons there's catfish in there those from, from the lake's aquarium that got out, and of course they can grow a foot a year, those, and there's, uh, they can grow up to eight foot long, so there is quite a few, I didn't get them because I, I thought there, there might be copyright problems with some of, so all those photos I just did myself, that you saw from a distance with a monster, but there's some real photos that people took, or they claim are, and I thought, well, there's copyright problems, but, but there's some, and they claim that they saw something sort of undulating on the water, and there's photos that look quite convincing, but it's very difficult to judge scale, you know, like yeah. you could, even from 70 or 80 feet away, because when something's like undulating through the water, it can create a little bit of a sort of... Mm. Yeah, so there could be a seven-foot catfish, could look like it's, you know, 20 foot long, you know, if someone's seen it from 100 feet away. But it, he thinks that whatever it was, it, it brushed underneath him and it sent up this three-foot-high bow wave. Uh, but what he so that bit was true. I mean, he and someone said that he's doing it to get tourists to go to his hotel. Um, and a woman did this vlog. She's, I think she's actually, and this is another thing that gave me the idea about the medium, the clairvoyant woman. There's a woman that claims to be a, a clairvoyant that went to stay at his hotel, and she's interested in cryptids, you know. And she said to him, um, well, you know, I get the fact that you're probably doing it to generate tourism and get, you know, get people to, to the hotel. I'm staying, I can't afford to stay in your hotel. I'm staying in a B&B. &B. And he said, well, how much are you paying? And she said, like, I don't know, 25 quid a night. And he said, well, I'll, you, you can pay 25 a night and stay here. So he did it. He matched the price and she stayed at him. So why would someone, you know, if they were really just doing it, they wouldn't do that, so. But he's remained like adamant that that's what they experience. So. He swims and, and a lot in the lake, doesn't he? Because he's been on the yeah, news well, about yeah. long distance. Yeah. Long distance. And yeah. I think that was there was that, and, and some of the sightings he mentioned, where he's talking about yeah, other people, was, that was what he claimed. And they're embarrassed because they say, you know, people will ridicule us. But he claims he wouldn't say who they are. But there's a yeah. few sailors that claim they've experienced weird things, which could be this catfish thing. Yeah, it could be. And yeah, they're very aggressive catfish. The I don't know if anyone's heard of Jeremy Wade, the guy who does the river monsters, has anyone? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, he, if you've seen some of the footage he shot, they actually are very, they will go, you know, they sometimes, 
You put your hand in, they'll go for your hand. You know. there, are, there are different types of catfish. There are yeah. about seven or eight different kinds of catfish. Kevin's a fisherman, by the way. <laughs> um, <laughs> some of the biggest in the world are in the River Ebro in Spain. Are they the biggest? I think the record is is twelve foot long. Wow. Yeah, and that's now, yeah. a mouth, and, and they are basically an eating machine. A mouth on a catfish is roughly about that size, uh, and the flat. So the heads are flat, and the mouths. So when they open wide, um, when they're eating, or when they're in for the mating season, if there's two or three males, then they'll rock anything out of the water yeah. anyway. And as you say, it's they probably are, they are Jeremy Wade once, yeah, yeah, once, once, if you get into the water and the catfish are either not particularly hungry because they won't actually go for a human in the sense to as as bait or anything like that. They don't <coughs> eat fish of any any different species. But when they're actually in the spawning season, well, like uh, any hot-blooded male, yeah. they go for any female yeah, that's in it, <laughs> and that's bang. Very much alpha. Yeah. yeah. So what happens with the film now? What, what are your plans? Gonna well, it's going to do three nights at the Royalty Cinema in, in uh, Bowness, mm -hmm. uh, November the 13th to the 15th. Um, mm -hmm. Charles Morris is going to show it. Um, I don't know if um, I mentioned maybe in passing, we did it with no, we couldn't get funding, so everything was done with no funding. And obviously here, being an independent venue and uh, the Royalty being independent, and it's a truly independent film, which seems fitting. Um, but the idea is, I hope it's sort of, you know, whether it provokes thought with people or not, with us, what we've done, I hope people might think, well, you know, if that's what they did with no funding, what could they do with funding? Or people like us, maybe. And, you know, we'd hope if you know, maybe this can, uh, something can come from this where we may attract funding for something else. Um, because it, you know, it couldn't. How could it be as good as it could be without funding? You know, because with Karen having to dep up for all these different things, and you know, um, multitasking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. um, but yeah, we'll see the the, the royalty. They're doing three nights um, on screen two, I think. Um, so it's a big. It'll actually be a big, decent. It's the medium size screen. Yeah. I think that's the one thing, um, is the, the question of funding and how far a film like this, an indie film, can go without funding and the difference that funding can make, um, even to enter it for festivals or competitions or you know those sort of things and to find a niche for it, you sometimes have to, you know, to enter something you've got to put money forwards before you can go for, well, with what? Even, for instance, the, the red dress scene, if I was going to do that, if I was wanted to do that again, which I don't particularly, but I would prefer to have done that better. Now, to do that better, being of my sort of age, I know I could do that better had I had two, three weeks beforehand and a rehearsal space to do which, lots more exercise <coughs> to practice it much more, to know that music better, but to pay for a rehearsal space at 50, yeah. 60 quid for a morning, three yeah. or four morning, two or three yeah. morning, out of what? For a month. Yeah. And then to, to, you know, we could have marked it out and we could have, yeah. could have done so much of a better job and done lots more bendy things instead of being, how stiff was I being? Mean, oh, yeah. <laughs> Which makes um, you realise my feature film idea. budgets are massive. Yeah. <laughs> done far yeah. better. Yeah. But, but, and a lot I of those things job, you could have done, point. you could have done more with more, more people to help, more I'm going to say, also to promote it. We funded, what we could have done with funding. Funding. Yeah. funding. We could have had you know? an independent cameraman or woman. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So Elliot wouldn't have had to set the shot, so film him himself film himself walking into the camera. Mm. We could have had somebody yeah. independently doing that yeah. just from the direction of Elliot. Mm. So funding really is, it does help a lot. Yeah, and I was starting to go into acting mode after like setting up the show. You know it's probably, there's a lot of deep focus in the, in the film. You know, there's not much sort of depth, the depth of field because uh, like, um, 
bear with me a second, shallow depth of field that you see in a lot of, it's a very common thing used in cinema and even interviews that you see on the news where the, per the subject is talking and behind him is very blurry. So they sort of, it creates that more dimensional look. That's very hard to do. I mean, good luck. If you can, you have to zoom in a lot, you know, and focus the person. Now, doing that and then walking into to shot, good luck doing that because to zoom the lens out. So that's why there's a lot of deep focus because it's how just set it up or cut down when we yeah. just walk in. But all those things, a dedicated camera person being paid a wage, which we would, if we got funding, we had to pay them, it, you know, that. But being a sort of semi documentary style, we may be. That is maybe a bit more forgiving. Yeah. And we were lucky that people were willing to give their time, um, like we, we, we all have, because we all believed in Elliot and, and his story and his film and, and want it to be successful, you know, yeah. which is, you know, we yeah. could have claimed all sorts of things yeah. like costumes yeah. and, and time and, and fuel and printing for things, and goodness knows, but we haven't, you know, we, we've wanted it to, to be a success because we've believed in. Elliot's craft and, and his skills, you know, which is what, what we did it for. And, and likewise, <laughs> and everybody, I mean, Carol's here as well, everyone didn't did it for free, no, and there was some, you know, for instance, Zoe and Anne, actually, I know their scenes seem very sort of surreal, which they're meant mm -hmm. to be, because you're supposed to interpret that, but they had to do a lot of green screening, and they had to come back several times and redo things, and again, they're juggling their private lives, working lives, yeah. and doing it for nothing. Elliot, <coughs> do you see developing the camera with this team, like the abominable film man or something? Scar Nessie. What, this, like, going in a cryptid hunter? Or something? <coughs> some, something, an abominable snowman hiding in a fell somewhere. You know, I mean, you could... Well, there's this black cat. There's the, you yeah. must have heard of this big black cat that's people yeah. seen yeah. around the, the yeah. lake. Yeah. 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 You talk about funding. What's the next project? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, the only way would be if, I mean, the royalty, I'm going to work really hard now to try and get some people to the royalty that, you know, if they're interested in it, would they consider funding us for another film? And obviously then I could pay everyone a wage if they wanted to do it, that's totally up to them, or whoever would, you know. But we, if I can't get funding, I wouldn't, I'm not going to do anything else because it's, it's too much. I mean, it took us two years to do this. And again, funding wouldn't, it would take a while, but, you know, it's difficult it to get it. funding if you, if you haven't got um, another edge. It's not sort of, hasn't got a political yeah, yeah. edge that's, to it. That's or a good it, point. Or it, it isn't about, you know, you, uh, you've got, you've, you've other made, matters. You've raised a really yeah. good point. Yeah. You've got to have another edge to it. Yeah. It, it, this is as it is. This is pretty apolitical. I mean, there's a few little, there's quite a few metaphors in the film. Mm. But that's a good point because we've discovered that I'm not getting on my soapbox here, but there's a the film, and it, it bothers me as someone you know in, in you know um, doing sort of film, music, whatever. That and it's similar in the music industry that everything has become so politicised now. So a lot of organisations, if you have a sort of, I'm not saying don't be political, but now things seem to be rather than an undertone, people will look. Some organisations. Will look for what's if if the if it's if the overtone is political they'll be interested, and to me art should always be dictated by art first, and any mm -hmm. politics mm -hmm. should be undertones. But now the art seems to be an undertone, and the mm -hmm. politics seems to be an overtone mm -hmm. with a lot of organisations with what they look for. So it doesn't really matter about what what you if you you know whether you're really saying anything or whether the art is really very expressive. It's just. Not all, but but we found a few where they're just interested in it being like you said, a political edge, and then they'll things. say yeah. If you tick the boxes, they'll say yeah, we'll give you. But I don't want to do that because I'm not. Other people can do that if they want, but for me, it should be the creative aspect of it first, and you know any messages you want to put out should be known. So, so that is you're up against it with that if you want to get. Some of these organisations to put um, for Bigfoot on an old belly. Let's do that. Yeah. yeah oh, we'll well, do, I think we'll we all, all yeah. wish Elliot the best for and his can future. Can I just say me, yeah? thank you very much to Fliss yeah. for, yes. for doing it? Fliss has been.
persevering. <laughs> <laughs> Eighteen months or so, we filmed. She took a lot of behind-the-scenes photos, some of which she never told me. But she's done. She's worked really hard. It's a very good. One. Sort of putting together this, these uh, display boards with photos of behind the scenes, some of which you'll see of the Canadian film crew, where it's just green screen. But please, you know, browse and have a look. Especially the ones with Elliot's legs. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming anyway. Yeah, thank you very much.